Okay, it's the beginning of August and it's been a month since I got my last haircut and it's also been a month since my last mail call. Welcome to the Infinity Closet. I am Peter and I have a pretty substantial mail call for the month of August. Well, I mean, it's August now, but I, these are all things that I got in July of, of 2019. And I'm gonna break it up into three sections. It's gonna be like modern-ish type stuff and convention-ish type stuff and vintage-ish type stuff. Uh, some, some surprises in here that I was certainly not expecting to add to the uh, Infinity Closet collection. So we're just gonna go ahead and jump right in, starting with the modern stuff. Okay, as far as modern things are concerned, uh, I purchased some things and playing catch up mostly. It's not like modern, 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 brand new in store stuff. There's a bunch of like bot bots and things I have around the corner over there. And we're not going to go through that stuff because it's in stores now. Why talk about it? Uh, so from our friends at Captured Prey, uh, real quick, I picked up a second Sunstreaker. So, you know, Masterpiece Sunstreaker. So I'll be able to open him up and play with him. Uh, you'll see that there's a theme of doubles in this episode just because I like buying doubles of things because I have uh, an addiction. To, uh, giant robot toys. So anyway, Sunstreaker, second Sunstreaker, so I'm going to be able to open him up and play with him at long last. Um, I've got a Twin Twist and a Top Spin from the Legends series. Uh, I've been waiting on these for a while, so I'm happy to add them. I'm almost done with Legends. I've got a few more of the smaller guys to get, um, so blah, blah, blah. Happy, happy to add those. Uh, I got my second Slug Slinger, so I'll be able to open up this Slug Slinger, and then I can sell my son, my US Slug Slinger, and then everyone will be happy because everyone will have their Slug Slingers and I'll be happy because mine will have a Target Master and yay. I really wish that the Japanese version of Slug Slinger, if either version of the of Slug Slinger had come with the toy version face with the visor and the, the different head greebles. I love that head and helmet style. I think it's, I think it's wonderful. Um, it's just a shame that it didn't show up anywhere else. You can get one on Shapeways. Someone designed one on Shapeways that you can customize and stuff, but I don't know about all that. So anyway, I'll just be happy with, with the head that we got, which is the cartoon comic head. Moving on from Hasbro Pulse. Be sure to shop Hasbro Pulse if you enjoy bent flaps and dinged corners. Hasbro Pulse for the collectors. I got uh, Ecto-1. He's got a nice dinged corner and a nice bent flap, so thanks for that, Hasbro. I hope when I order my multiple Unicrons from you, they also come in mangled boxes. Huzzah! Picked up a green light from Amazon this is my second green light. So I'll be able to open this one up and put her on the shelf with the other fembots. I need to get a second Lancer, but that would mean that I had already purchased a first Lancer and we'll get to that in a second. Uh, last for the modern ish section, another double. I purchased, can you see it? Nope. Can't see it. I purchased a second Grand Maximus. So I'll be able to open up this Grand Maximus and put him with my Chug Master Force stuff. Uh, and my, other one will be in a tote for the time being. Um, got them on discount from Big Bad Toy Store, I believe. And I got them on such a discount that I'll be able to, you know, for the price of the original Chug Grant or Legends, whatever, Grand Maximus, I should be able to get uh, his foot upgrades, hand upgrades, and gun upgrades. I think the feet and hands are all in one package. But anyway, for the price of the original one, I'll be able to get, I, I, I will have gotten this one plus the upgrades and then he'll be like, perfect on my Master Force shelf. Okay, trucking right along into the convention stuff. Uh, I had a number of friends that went to San Diego Comic-Con uh, a couple of weeks ago, and one of them was able to pick up uh, just about everything that was available at the show. I did not get the, the big MP10 Ecto-35 Optimus Prime figure, and that's okay, it's gonna be available. There was limit one per figure, or one per person, whatever, and it's gonna be available at other places, whereas a lot of this other stuff is gone and will remain gone for the foreseeable future. So I was super grateful to my friend Nick at Big Tin Robot Toys and Collectibles uh, to have been able to uh, pick all these things up for me. Very, very much appreciated. Thank you, Nick. Uh, so jumping right into it, uh, Lancer. We've got Lancer. She's uh, she's the, the one of the fembots. There's probably a picture somewhere. There might be a picture here. Is there a picture here? I don't know. There might be a picture here. Um, she's orange and purple. Um, boop, boop, boop. And when you got her at the show, she came with a pin and a little ribbon. And that's cool. All right. Moving on from Lancer, we've got the Galactic Man Shockwave Redeco. Uh, the Galactic Man Shockwave Redeco is an homage to when Shockwave 
was released at uh, Radio Shack stores. It's commonly called a Shack Wave. It's, it's a gray redeco and it's a gray redeco of the Leader Class Siege Shockwave figure. Um, and he also, when you got him at the show, came with a, a ribbon and a pin, which is super sweet. Next up, we've got these evergreen looking bag clips, uh, Bumblebee, Silver Optimus Prime, and a Megatron. They're, they're using the, uh, the evergreen-ish designs. So Bumblebee's got headlights on his shoulders and that's about it. Pretty neat and uh, speaks for itself. Got these uh, Han Cholo, well I got one Han Cholo pin. It's a 35th anniversary Optimus Prime shield. It almost looks like, almost looks like a Rodimus star, except it's an Optimus star, which is a whole lot less fun. Um, for, for those of you who don't know, Rodimus star is a, uh, my light went out. For those of you who don't know, uh, Rodimus Star is a little badge that Rodimus Prime was giving, or I'm sorry, that Rodimus was giving out uh, when he was Captain of the Lost Light, uh, and he would hand them out for all sorts of ridiculous reasons, and uh, yeah, so I want a Rodimus Star. I wish someone would come up with Rodimus Star pins. I would wear one every day. Yeah, anyway, so there's that. We've got the Transformers BotBots Con Crew, and Con not meaning Decepticon, but Con is in convention, because this was the convention exclusive, and it has fun art on the front and back and three new teams. You've got the meet and greets, the uh, Fantastic Fuelers and the Line League. Line League, you know, because you go to the convention and you pay to stand in line. What fun! So anyway, uh, pretty neat set. And does it open? Eh. Yes, it does. It opens and you can see all these great little dudes. They're fun. <sighs> we need more bot pots. Moving on. Got the Flame Toys uh, Nemesis Prime model kit. Uh, it says IDW version, but yeah. So anyway, it's a, it's a redeco of their Optimus Prime. It has the little shoulder shoulder things. So it's not a Nemesis Prime IDW. It's not an IDW version of Nemesis Prime. It's a Nemesis Prime deco of the IDW version of Optimus Prime as he appeared in a, a section of the IDW continuity. So make of that what you will. It's a neat little model kit. I'll probably never open it. I'll probably never assemble it, but I'm happy to have it added to the collection. Next up, we've got the Soundwave and Blaster Versus set uh, for the Transformers uh, trading card game. Uh, that's about it. Nice Gen 1 packaging. Ooh, it's pretty. And it comes with Ramhorn, Steeljaw, Eject, Ravage, Buzz, Saw, Frenzy. Blaster and Soundwave, obviously. Very cool. This is fun. It's a it's a, an expansion pack for uh, for the for the card game, and it is the Omnibots, which is downshift, camshaft, and overdrive. Uh, I had the Omnibots as a kid. They were mail away figures that weren't available in stores, and really neat. I loved downshift as a kid, and my first car was a 1985 Toyota Celica Supra, which is the American version of the Japanese Celica XX, which is what downshift transforms into. So I have a, an affinity for well, one for Supras, who doesn't have an affinity for Supras? And, uh, and two for, for that particular model. The Mark II Supra is just, oh, it's sexy. I can't wait to get another one. Um, so yeah, my first car was, was that. And then I drove it into the desert and it blew up. And then I had to trade what was left of its carcass for a bus ticket so I could go to Las Vegas. It was a whole adventure thing um, back in, what was that, 99, 1999. That's a long time ago. No. Yeah, 99. Anyway, so that, that's that. Um, I've had a few Supras since then, but no Mark II, so I need to get another Mark II. That'll happen someday. So anyway, very cool set. Uh, downshift, camshaft, and overdrive. What about downshift, camshaft, overdrive? Oh, and fun fact, camshaft transforms into a Mazda RX-7, which is a vehicle that has a rotary-style Vonkel engine, which does not, in fact, have a camshaft. The more you know. So, very neat set. What else? Last for the convention stuff, um, my friend Paul from Collecticon Toys, he runs an annual get together. It's a weekend get together, barbecue, hanging out, people enjoying themselves, just, uh, just, just, just enjoying each other's company at his place. And for the last three years, he has offered um, exclusive toys for the weekend get together. He calls it PFCon. And this year was no different. 
Uh, I have the last two years worth of uh, PFCon exclusives and I got this year's set of PFCon exclusives. Um, so I'll just hold them up one at a time. I've got the, uh, what are you again? What's your name? Ugh. They all have silly names based on his local friends and, and things going on. This is a scalper bot drone. It's a redeco of the, uh, the ape face Titan master figure. Oop. We've got Phil switch, which is based on Phil from the Chicago cons. He's, he, he's a guy that hangs out there. He's pretty cool. Um, and, uh, yeah, so anyway, they, he, he, uh, Paul had custom packaging made up. He redecoed the figures himself. Some of it's dyed, some of it's hand-painted, uh, which is very cool. And the packaging is, if you can see here, it's it's got Velcro. You can reseal it so you can open the figure up, play with it, and put it back in the package, which is great. The third issue, third annual issue of the comic featuring the Chicago Cons. And this other figure is called uh, Scalperbot Elite and Frieza. So that's that's pretty cool. And then you also have, you know, would be oh god, would be oh god, uh, would be figures and things that have already come out, like Lighthouse and the PK clone, are from previous uh, conventions. So that's about it. Uh, I'm gonna put a link in the description below. My friend Brewman Robert, uh, he reviewed these and he's gonna go into he goes into it in a whole lot more depth than I uh, plan to on this video. So check the link. Uh, go to Brewman's page, like his videos, he's great. Um, so yeah, that's about it for the convention stuff. Now we're going to roll into the vintage pieces. Okay, last but certainly not least in this month's mail call is the vintage-ish section. Uh, jump right into it. We've got a Generation 2 Walmart kids meal thing. It's a puzzle. It's a puzzle hidden in a book. Like so. That's all it is. It's two pages. You can pop it out. You can ruin it if you want by tearing it apart. Or you can just uh, enjoy it. I am Optimus Prime. Remember the Gen 2 talking box Optimus Prime had the I am Optimus Prime? Anyway, so yeah. So that's pretty cool. Uh, I still need to get the Generation 2 Dairy Queen Optimus Prime figure. It's a little simple Optimus Prime thing. So if you have one, sell one to me. Uh, next up, we've got a sticker sheet. Sticker sheet uh, for the MicroMasters from 1989. The first few sets of MicroMasters were released in 88 style packaging with the uh, before the font change that, that happened in 89. And this is reflected here where it says the Transformers instead of just Transformers with the, the italicized uh, font. Uh, it's really hard to find, and this has a 1989 copyright. Um, it's really hard to find uh, merchandise from Generation 1 that is post 87. I know there was a, a lunchbox in 88 and there were some things in the UK and in Europe that, that came out a little bit later. Uh, but in the US, most of the merch kind of stopped right around 87, 88. Um, but this is copyright 89, and the copyright is from uh, Current Incorporated in Colorado Springs, Colorado. So that's, that's pretty interesting. And it has, you know, members of the Off-Road Patrol and the Autobot Sports Car Patrol. Um, so it's, it's just a neat little piece of history, and I'm, I'm, I'm it, it's neat. Don't you want one? I want two. I want one that's not dirty, but I'm happy with this one. <laughs> anyway, um, moving on. My friend Glenn sold me a couple of books. One of which is a Car Robot uh, character guide. Uh, Car Robot was the series that followed uh, Beast Wars originally in Japan, and it was the first like kind of return to vehicle type uh, Transformers in Japan. Uh, in forever, I don't know, since Beast Wars. And it included some Beast Wars molds and a couple of newer molds, uh, new molds unique to that series. So it's just a character guide and it has, uh, you know, pictures of the toys and pictures of the characters and, you know, character models, fun stuff like that. Oh, it's neat. I love character guides. I love things like this. They're a lot of fun. In addition to the car robot one, he sold me a Beast Wars one. And this one is, it, it features, you know, it's a, it's a toy. It's a toy catalog, basically. It shows, it has little pictures of the, the cart, uh, from the cartoon. Um, then it has a section in the back for, uh, like, figures that were only at the time available in the U.S., like Jetstorm and, and Drillbit and Iguanas and K9 and those guys, uh, who some of those would eventually show up in Beast Wars 2nd and Beast Wars Neo. So it's just a really neat, from a snapshot in time, when, when the first series of Beast Wars was what was available. It's pretty cool. So, 
Okay, what else do we have here? Okay, I've got this. It's a VHS from Master Force. It, it's, it's a VHS from Master Force. <laughs> I don't know. Um, it says it's volume four. Um, I don't know what the numbering schema for these are, is, ams, but uh, it's it's late enough in the series to where they, they, they show the three Godmaster uh, Cybertrons, they show King Poseidon, they show Overlord, uh, so and, and they show Super Genrai, which happens around issue 14, or issue, episode 14 or 15 of the Master Force cartoon. Uh, so, I don't know. I'm going to have to pop this in and watch it. Uh, very cool. <laughs> yeah. Uh, next up, in the vintage recap, I got a Saison. It's uh, the 1987 version of Saison from the Headmaster series, individually boxed. It's been sealed tape on both sides. There's a little bit of a ding in the box right there, but that's okay. Uh, box is otherwise uncut. No, no flap. No flap crease. Um, and everything, I mean, it's sealed, so everything's in there. So that's great. So I'm almost done with train bots, the 1987 train bots. I still need to get uh, a ride and box set that isn't like mangled. There's, there's a lot of them available that are just torn up and I don't want that I want them I want it to look pretty sharp um, so I'm missing for the 1987 set I think I'm missing Kayan and for the 1990 zone set I'm missing Sazen but I have his box and I'm missing the figure for Kayan um, I have the box and all the stuff but I need the figure itself and again you have to keep track of the the stamps and you have to keep track you know the, the, the mold stamps and you have to keep track of the mold variations considering the uh, the removal of the rub sign. Um, so yeah, gotta keep my eyes open. Almost done, we're almost done, it's exciting. So, last piece uh, in this in this mail call is this. It's a Rabbit Crater uh, from Zone C350. It is the uh, the Rabbit Crater MicroMaster. He's a blue redeco of the Skystalker figure that was released uh, with the Skystalker uh, jet in 1989 in America. He just, he came out in blue in Japan. He was also redecoed. Is that Metro Bomb? I think it's Metro Bomb, the little little guy that came with Metro Titan. Um, yeah, so I got Rabbit Crater. I've been looking for him for a long time. You see him every once in a while, and so I, I, I've, I've had friends that said they were going to go to Japan and pick it up, and then that didn't work out, and yeah, I've done unsuccessful bids on them before, and so I, I bought this lot. It was a lot that included Rabbit Crater, and it also included rabbit crater so I got two rabbit craters in this lot uh, both of them I mean they're open but they're complete they're unused and now I have two of them and I got them for next to nothing so this uh, my zone collection continues to to fill itself out and uh, this is a big piece for me and I'm, I'm just I am delighted Okay, so that about does it for my mail call for the month of August, July, August uh, 2019. Uh, got a lot of really cool stuff, all the modern stuff and the convention stuff and the vintage stuff. I'm so happy to get these rabbit craters and the season. I'm, I'm just closer every month. Every month I get closer to my goal, which is the same goal I've had since I was a kid, and that's to have everything. It, it, don't tell me it's not going to happen. Just let me believe in that, okay? So next month will probably be a slower month. As I say, every month, Unicron is coming, all the Target pre-orders and Amazon pre-orders, all that junk. I've got to get the, the Ecto-35, and that's going to slow down my vintage purchases. So it'll, it'll be a slower month next month, I think. Really. 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 Um, we'll see. So that's about it for me. Uh, until next month or until next time, until next week, I gotta do a spotlight video on some of these smaller things. I wanna go through books and show you what I've got going on in here. Don't forget to check out Brewman's video on the PFCon pieces, and I will see you next time. Until then, I'm Peter, this is my Infinity Closet, and I'll talk to you later. Forever Destron.